You've probably heard the old rhyme giving more or less sound advice about how to survive an attack by different kinds of bears. It goes, if it's brown, lay down. If it's black, fight back. If it's white, good night. While there's some truth to it, though slowly backing away from a brown bear is more advisable than playing dead, and carrying a shotgun is simply the best practice when going into any and every bear territory. Even the feared white polar bears have their weaknesses. In this video, we're looking at the story of Garrett Colson, a Canadian man who had an unhappy encounter with an aggressive polar bear, and lived to tell the tale. This story takes us back in time to 2013, more precisely to September 7, 2013, a Saturday night, or incredibly early morning, really, depending on where you think 2 a.m. fits, when the town of Churchill was mostly fast asleep. Churchill is a town in northern Manitoba, on the west shore of Hudson Bay. It's located far above most of the other Canadian populated areas. The closest large settlement, Thompson, is roughly 250 miles to the south, and Winnipeg, Manitoba's provincial capital, is approximately 620 miles south of Churchill. The region has a rich culture, with people leading their lives and hunting there long before Europeans even made it to the Americas. The town can be traced back to the 18th century, but people don't visit Churchill for its history. They visit it for the impressive Canadian scenery, with boreal forests to the south, the Arctic tundra to the northwest, and Hudson Bay to the north. There are many activities to entertain a tourist who wants to experience what the town has to offer. Sport fishing is a popular pastime, and so are expeditions on land, sea, and air. Churchill tourism heavily relies on something not many other areas in the world can brag about the polar bears that move toward the shore from inland in the fall. The numerous polar bears that cross the area yearly had gained the town a fascinating, if not frightening, nickname. Churchill is widely regarded as the polar bear capital of the world. Starting in the 80s, the town had developed safe ways for tourists to witness the massive polar bear migration. There are guided tours through the wilderness, bear watching from vehicles built to explore the tundra, or tours via boats, offering the possibility of seeing bears in the non-winter season when they spend their time on coastal areas, both on land and swimming in the sea to catch some of those tasty ring seals. But on that day of September 7, 2013, 40-year-old Garrett Colson had no idea just how large the area's polar bear population was. He didn't know many locals usually leave their cars unlocked in case there's a hungry bear nearby and he had yet to hear about Churchill's unusual polar bear jail, where bears who get too close to the town and terrify the locals are held after being tranquilized and released back when the bay freezes over and they lose interest in the land. No, Garrett Colson didn't exactly know these things. Sure, he had a general idea about polar bears loitering in the area, but he didn't even know that Churchill was the polar bear capital of the world. After all, it was just his second week in town. He was from Winnipeg, the capital and largest city of the province of Manitoba. A fully-fledged urban area with 236 neighborhoods and a population of hundreds of thousands. A huge number compared to Churchill's few hundred inhabitants. And Winnipeg didn't exactly have polar bears. If you wanted to see one, you'd go to the zoo and call it a day, like any sensible person would. Colson wasn't in Winnipeg anymore, though. The 40-year-old was a border agent employed by Canada Customs to inspect international grain ships, and his duty was in Churchill now. On Friday, September 6, 2013, Garrett Colson went for after-work drinks. He wanted to celebrate the end of his second week at the job and loosen up. Work is stressful enough, but having to move to a totally unknown place, it's also no easy feat. The man went out for drinks at the Seaport Hotel, Churchill's only year-round hotel. It's uncertain whether he was there by himself or with newfound friends. But what we do know is that he got up to leave on early Saturday, September 7th, approximately two hours after midnight. Churchill was a small, quiet town, so Garrett Colson didn't waste much time before deciding to get to his accommodations by foot. It was chilly outside, yes, but there wasn't really any danger in that. And, as mentioned earlier, he had no idea about the large polar bear population in the area. And he certainly didn't know September, a month when any polar bear encounter is bound to end badly. 
The white creatures are more active in the months before the ice freezes and they can finally make their way to the shores. No thought of this sort played Garrett Coulson's mind. To him, walking home at night in Churchill, while by himself, didn't sound like a bad idea. Even more, it was a short walk. Canada Customs rented a home for its agents about five blocks away from the Seaport Hotel, where the man had been drinking. And the Seaport is on Kelsey Boulevard, the town's main drag. Certainly, nothing could go wrong. Except it did. As the man made his way home, he realized there were no homes on that street, only businesses. And perhaps that realization wouldn't have bothered him. But then he heard a muffled sound, and his instincts kicked in. Colson looked over his shoulder, already a bit tense, and saw what no one ever wants to see. There was a polar bear, angrily charging toward him. The man couldn't believe his eyes, but didn't waste a second on trying to make sense of what he was seeing. Instead, he broke into a run, desperate to get away from the animal and find someplace safe. There was no home in sight, only stores and other businesses. Colson stopped and turned to face the bear, which wasn't necessarily an inspired decision. In an instant, the animal was upon the man, right on top of him. The border agent started shouting, yelling, screaming, and waving his arms at the bear, hoping to scare it away. But while making yourself appear bigger and scarier might work on deterring a black bear, a polar bear doesn't care too much about these antics. The white beasts instinctively know they're bigger, stronger, and fiercer, even when they're not fully grown. Garrett Coulson looked frantically all around him, trying to find a safe haven. He found a bakery instead and bolted toward its door, praying to find it open. But of course, it was locked. The man fought desperately with the knob, but to no avail. And then the young polar bear pinned him against the door, its nose almost touching the man. But Coulson didn't give a damn about the bear's nose. He was more concerned about its snapping jaws and the massive teeth, which looked like they were dying to get a taste of the man. The bear bit and scratched the man all over. It bit his leg and swatted at him a few times with his massive paws. Coulson was desperate, and then an idea formed in his mind. Well, it wasn't an actual idea, but more of an instinct to defend himself by any means necessary, with any tool he could get his hands on. Breathing hard and being scared out of his wits, the man pulled his phone out of his pocket and turned the device on. The screen lit up, and not even thinking, the man shoved the phone in the young bear's face. The animal was too stunned to do anything else. Instead, it got confused and took a step back. When it stepped back, it knocked over a plant pot on the porch, which startled the animal enough to make its head turn. The 40-year-old didn't need anything else to happen. He took the chance and ran as fast and far as he could. Colson ran several blocks, looking for a home with its lights on. He finally saw some people hanging out on a deck and ran to them. He didn't know them, and they didn't know him, but he was ecstatic to see other human beings. And when he turned to take a look, he saw no trace of the bear. At last, he was safe. Meanwhile, a taxi driver was driving in her car when she came across the young bear. The woman honked her horn and chased the animal away. She then picked up Garrett Coulson, who had himself taken to the health center. His wounds were cleaned and bandaged, and he was given a tetanus shot. As for the bear, it was captured on Saturday and put in bear jail, awaiting further assessment. It was an almost 300-pound teenage polar bear. Garrett Coulson was released only a couple of hours later and was back at work on Monday, feeling lucky to be alive. He had a newfound respect for bears. When you're in Churchill, take a cab, he laughed, or drive. Don't walk after dark. This was his advice to anyone new to Churchill.